Hi, this is the new Raspberry Pi 2, just released very recently, and a user by the name of Peter Onion discovered something very interesting with this board. Let's take a photo of this lovely little board with a camera with a Xenon photo flash on it. Here we go. Oops, look what happened. We have just reset, not only reset our board, but we've... Um, actually locked it up. It is no longer working at all. To get it working again, we have to repower the thing. What's going on? Well, it's actually pretty darn obvious. Now, when this thing was first reported, of course, it spread like wildfire on all the forums and blogs and everywhere else, including the EEV log forum. Everyone's going, oh, what's going on? This mysterious effect. But Hey, anyone who's been in the electronics industry a long time would instantly have seen this, like I did, and just went, oh, yeah, that's the photoelectric effect. Something on there is photosensitive to the xenon flash. No worries, happens all the time. And when I say happens all the time, well, it's actually not that common, but it's been a very well-known effect for a long time that uh, light, as I'll explain in a minute, can affect semiconductors. And normally it's not an issue because uh, semiconductors like the main Broadcom chipset here, uh, for example, and uh, the main um, Ethernet chipset down in here and all the other little black blobs you can see on there, they're plastic encapsulated or ceramic encapsulated or whatever. And of course the photons of light can't get through to affect any of the uh, semiconductors inside there. So it obviously wasn't that. And uh, people, you know, just did trial and error, looked around, and they finally found the culprit. Wah, right down here. And bingo, there's our culprit there, that tiny little chip there, U16. You can see it in comparison to an 0402 capacitor there. It's absolutely tiny. And anyone who with any uh, electronics uh, packaging experience knows that is a chip scale package, which I'll talk about in a minute. And aha, uh -huh, of course, that sucker is going to be photosensitive because it's effectively a bare die flipped on its uh, front side. So what we've got here is what's called a wafer level chip scale package, CSP. And what it is, is basically a bare semiconductor die with the balls directly on the bottom. And you can see the balls under there like this. And this is different to a, the balls on a regular BGA device, for example. They are plastic encapsulated or ceramic encapsulated chips. This is not. This is merely a bare die on there like that with just little metal balls on the bottom and flipped over. So essentially the wafer of this uh, chip here is actually exposed on the bottom. If we actually flip that over, you'd be able to see the circuitry on the back. And this is how the light is able to get in. It's able to sneak in under those balls in there and actually affect the semiconductor junctions in there, the PN junctions, and hence cause the thing to latch up, do something silly, give an impulse in the wrong part of the circuit, whatever is actually functionality-wise is causing this switch mode power supply chip to lock up. So what's happening here is basic quantum physics. You should have learnt this in Physics 101. You're no doubt familiar with uh, the Planck relationship, relationship. Energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. Now, uh, Albert Einstein in 1905 wrote a paper that uh, explained some results of this and how that uh, previously, uh, of course, we thought that uh, light was a wave, but he uh, proposed that light was actually a packetized bunch of photons. So when the photons hit a metallic material like this, it actually emits electrons like that because we're based on the Planck formula. So that, that's known now as the Planck-Einstein uh, formula, Planck-Einstein relationship. And not only does it work with just basic metal surfaces like this, you've got energy in these photons, they hit and they release and emit electrons. Well, it, it's not just like a sheet of metal just sitting there. It's also going to happen with a semiconductor PN junctions, i.e. Your, your transistors and your diodes and everything else, that modern electronics and everything on this Raspberry Pi board is made with. It's all going to uh, somehow emit some uh, amount of electrons if any sort of photon, if any amount of photon hits it based on that relationship and it's based on the frequency which I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, you can uh, demonstrate this in a vacuum tube for example if you've got the cathode down here and the anode up here, photons come in then electrons leave the plate and you can actually get 
a current flow around there. And the same thing happens in your PN junction here. If you expose it to light, as what we're doing up here with this uh, switch mode uh, converter, then electrons can actually flow around the circuit. And that can completely screw up the chip depending on how much uh, photon energy is actually coming in here and at what part of the circuit and how the circuit works and all that sort of stuff. But it can certainly, and in this case we've demonstrated, it does affect it. Now here's something that's often not well known. Albert Einstein actually won his Nobel Prize in Physics for the photoelectric effect, exactly what's happening here. He did not win it for the more famous theory of relativity because that was still sort of a bit debated by the time it came around. So he actually won it for this photoelectric effect, which of course was the start of uh, both him and Planck. This was effectively the start of quantum fit, the theory of quantum uh, physics as we know it today. Now it's actually not just a weird side effect of affecting uh, chips that are exposed like this chip scale package we've got here. This is a uh, principle is fundamental to all the sensors that we have these days. The camera that you're using, the camera I'm shooting this with now is not possible if it wasn't for the photoelectric effect. Photons actually strike the semiconductor sensor inside the camera and generate a current and that can be measured and turned in to the image that you're seeing now. The infrared receiver you got on your TV, the remote control, all that sort of stuff. Solar cells, for example, they work based on the photoelectric effect and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it really is a fundamental uh, physical uh, phenomenon, fundamental principle of physics and electronics 101. So that's why something like this, that semiconductor junctions are affected by light is, is nothing new to electronics people. It's a very well-known phenomenon. And we can actually demonstrate exactly what's happening here. I've got a standard five millimeter LED here. I think it's a yellow one. Doesn't matter about the color. And I've got it hooked up to my uh, triplet analog multimeter here in current mode. So it's uh, 60 microamps full scale deflection here. And I'll get my camera, this flash. Here we go, let's hook it up. Let's flash this and See that? See the needle jump there? That is the photoelectric effect in action. It's converting the photons from this uh, xenon arc flash here into the uh, PN junction of this LED and it actually generates a current. Not a huge amount, but you can see that it actually does have an effect. And in a modern uh, IC like we have on this Raspberry uh, Pi, it might have uh, lots of high impedance uh, nodes on the inside. Well, that amount of current can be a real big deal and that's what's causing that chip to latch up. And here's a metal can transistor, which you're no doubt used to. It's a 2N2222A and I've cut the top off that and you can probably see the die inside there with the two bonding wires jumping over to it. That tiny little blob in there, that is the little uh, transistor die and the wires go over to there. I've hooked it up to a breadboard. Now we've exposed this thing to light. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. See that? Jumped up. It's doing exactly the same thing on that uh, PN junction inside the transistor. And of course, all your modern ICs in here, they're all just physical PN junctions, uh, transistors, exactly what's inside there. Oh, that's, ah, that's nice and sharp cutting that thing open. Ooh, and no wonder this thing is locking up. When you expose the PN junction in there to all this photon energy coming from that uh, xenon flash, it's really going to ruin your day. Now I mentioned before, it's all determined upon the actual frequency here, not necessarily the amplitude. That's why uh, some people on the forums who've been investigating this, they've been shining like, I think like 1800 lumens onto the chip and you can't make it do it because it's not necessarily about the amplitude. It's the frequency. And here is a typical Xenon arc spectrum in nanometers, the wavelength and the visible spectrum, of course, around about 390 to uh, 780 nanometers or thereabouts. That's the visible spectrum. So it's generating, you know, the bulk of the energy within that visible wavelength. But look at these massive spikes up here in the near infrared. So it's possibly the near infrared stuff here that's really giving 
uh, a kick into uh, the chip and whatever is causing that there. So, you know, it's not necessarily about just shining light into it. it. has to be a specific frequency. No electrons will be emitted from this metal surface unless it hits a specific frequency. And that spectrum from the Xenon arc lamp is why it's able to work in this particular case. And that's why people have had no luck with their phone flashes like this. Look. See, no problem whatsoever, because it's just regular ambient light, all of the energy is contained down here, and I suspect what's happening is uh, up in the near infrared or something like that, that's what we're getting the huge, uh, not only does it have the frequency, but it has the energy up in that range as well. So I suspect that's what's happening. And the actual chip uh, used in here, the switch mode power supply converter, it's actually an on semiconductor NCP6343. And unfortunately, there's not a public data sheet uh, for it. But yeah, like even if you had the data sheet, you're probably only just guessing uh, what aspect of the circuit is actually latching up and doing that sort of stuff. But uh, you know, it's your regular switch mode um, a buck power supply converter. So it's a step down uh, converter, typical topology, but it does have, uh, you know, a fair amount of circuitry in there to enable that so it could be any aspect of that you know you'd have to go back to on semiconductor themselves and they'd have to do extensive experiments to figure out what's going on here so if anyone thinks they know eh, it's just a guess so you might think okay what happens if we shoot say a laser onto here well i've got the little you know half a milliwatt uh, laser pointer or whatever it is yeah it's uh, no look, well less than one milliwatt so it's just your typical laser pointer here and well i can't get that to do anything regardless of what angle i shoot it at or anything like that i can't get a damn sausage Look at that. So that's rock solid. But it's certainly a possibility because we don't know the exact uh, wavelength that's actually uh, causing this thing. So it will be a specific frequency. Of course, amplitude, of course, uh, plays a role too. You can't just, you know, hit it with, uh, you know, bugger all energy and just because it's the right frequency, it's going to upset it. No, it has to be a specific energy and a specific frequency in the spectrum in order to generate what's called photocurrent. And when you actually get a current flow through a PN junction or a circuit or solar cell or whatever it is, um, that's actually called a photon current because it's uh, converting the photon into a current in your circuit. So how can they fix the problem of this little chip? Well, it's very simple. There's two ways to do it. Either you use another chip that is not a uh, chip scale package, i.e. an exposed die, so you use uh, like a BGA part or something like that, that'll be just fine, just like this BGA part is just fine. No light's going to sneak under there and get onto that Broadcom um, arm processor die in there. It's just not going to happen because it is fully encapsulated. It's only on that tiny little beast down in there, the chip scale package. So you can either change the package, which uh, probably means that, you know, a totally different chip, you have to change the layout, the pinout, all that sort of thing perhaps. Or as is very common with that uh, chip on board, COB technology in the industry, which uses bare dies directly on the board, uh, like generally facing up, they'll actually put them facing up and then little bond wires going over that have a machine that actually just uh, bonds the wires directly from the chip onto the pad. And that's how, you know, really low cost, super low cost uh, greeting cards, for example, might work. All those sort of, you know, throwaway uh, products that cost, you know, a cent or something like that for the circuitry. That's how they get them if using chip on board technology and then they encapsulate it rather than the bare die to protect it all and also to shield it from light as well they gunk it with an epoxy a big black epoxy so if you've ever seen a big black blob on a board that's chip on board technology and they could come along it's probably their factory that assembles this probably has that they just have a machine which comes over you know a, a human usually uh does it they just bring it over and go gunk you know like a big uh, syringe type thing just comes over and just gunks it all in big black goo like that and it sets and bobs your uncle all right so let's see if we can probe and capture something here when we actually do this so i've got my uh, scope probe connected across the 1.2 volt output of u16 that's the switch mode power supply under question here and there we go there's our nice 1.2 volts 500 millivolts per division everything's hunky dory let's it's all working and uh trust me it's uh, on the screen there so let's hook it up and flash it bingo captured 
look at that. We've got some sort of transients actually trigger when it's gone back up. Um, so it's obviously dropped here. There's something happened right back over here. Let's have a look. You can see a tiny little impulse there. That's It's not gone up by much. And that's, so if we zoom right into that, we've got the capture memory to do that. There's really nothing doing there because we've got our big antenna earthly connected up to this. We're not actually probing it uh, properly. You gotta, this is where you gotta be careful. Could be a trap for young players when you're trying to measure this sort of thing. When you've got this ground lead connected like that, you've got a nice and big turn there which can pick up any electromagnetic uh, pulse generated by that xenon arc flash in there all the current flowing can easily couple into that and uh you know cause that sort of spike so i don't think that's actually what's uh uh, causing the thing what's genuinely there. I think that's actually being picked up by the probe But you can see that your regulator is obviously dropping out and then it's coming back into regulation like that But it so it still works. So the switch my power supply is recovering that chip is recovering just fine But it's the Raspberry Pi processor or whatever else well There's only a processor in there really that is locked up and uh, causing it to do it. So it's not the switch mode power supply controller itself. I think that's recovering just fine and dandy. Let's see if we can AC couple that. Okay, our Raspberry Pi is running. We're AC coupled this. We're now down at uh, 20 millivolts per division. Let's flash it. Ta-da, you can see that big impulse in there. No, look at that. No, it's still fine. So you can see it's just fine. There it is. Uh, even though our screen is blank, our process is locked up, everything else, that switch mode is is just fine. So it's not entirely the fault of the switch mode controller chip that's causing it, but it's certainly uh, something to do with the ARM uh, processor, the Broadcom processor, that's not allowing it to gracefully restart after that uh, uh, the, the big dip we saw in the power rail. So just to make sure this is actually genuinely the output and not some sort of uh, current induced in the scope probe uh, itself, which I believe that high frequency content there is. So I've scaled this up. We're now on 200 millivolts per division. We can see the dip a lot better there. But this is, uh, by, just by the shape of it and the recovery like that, it looks like it is the switch mode uh, controller actually doing that, recovering and then ramping up and leveling back out there. But hey, let's uh, just prove that by putting some blue tack over the chip, i.e. Uh, masking out the light, doing the flash again, see if we can get any trigger. Okay, so I've restarted the thing. I put a big blob of blue tack over that. That should keep out the light from the sides and around the chip. And let's flash it. Trigger again. Oh no, we still get it. Look at that. And no, I didn't get the light out enough. Jeez, it's sensitive. Well, it seems like my blue tack's not up to snuff. I had to put a hell of a lot more on there before I could get it so it's not sensitive. So now if we single shot trigger, of course, there we go. It's, we did get that impulse there. That's interesting, actually. Check it out. So we got that impulse, as I suspected, that is due to the um, electromagnetic pickup by the coil. That's why it's all high frequency stuff. But we do get a little, little bip, a blip like that, positive going up. Once again, that's at a much, much lower frequency. So that's, that's rather interesting. So there is still a bit of a hiccup in that supply. There's one thing I do want to check, and that's its uh, reverse side dependency. No, so we got that same thing happening there. So yeah, I think that's... Yeah, that's no problem whatsoever. Anyway, we've proved that the huge dip that we saw there was actually the uh, a dropping out of the switch mode regulator and then recovering and restarting. So that's pretty well proven. And I saw that somebody actually referred to this as the Mogwai effect. And well, all you youngsters out there who've never seen Gremlins, you won't know what we're talking about. But it's kind of funny, but not really accurate because it's not sunlight that does this it's a specific high frequency uh xenon arc flash that does it ah oh, well eh nice term though three no no what happened he hates bright light and yes that is awful blue tack i've got Ugh. i don't know how long i've had that sitting around but oh man i'll never get all that off 
So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. There's nothing unusual happening here at all. But if you haven't seen or heard about the photoelectric uh, effect, or even if you had, but you didn't know it applied to uh, basic electronics and PN junctions and everything else in today's modern electronics, then, well, you've learned something new. Catch you next time.